Just got done editing this interview. You guys are gonna love it. Before I do that though, I want you to know that I'm going to be in the comments for the next 30 minutes or so answering your questions. If there's additional questions you want me to ask the CEO next time I interview them, leave them below. Or if you're just loving the data points I get CEOs to share, click the thumbs up button below. That's your way of telling me you're loving this stuff and I'll get you more of it. Additionally, again, I'll be in the comments answering any questions you have. All right, for 30 minutes, enjoy the interview. Hello, everyone. My guest today is Nitin Verma. He is the founder and CEO of a company called Orgzit, which is helping people build customized software fast without coding. He's done business strategy and execution uh, professional with 15 plus years of experience delivering high growth products for SMBs and large enterprises. Got an MS from Virginia Tech, MBA from NCAD, uh, BTEC from Delhi College of Engineering, along with many other accolades. All right. You ready to take us to the top, Nitin? Absolutely. All Let's right. get started. So tell us, you know, no code is obviously a fast growing kind of trend. Are you playing in that space? And if so, what exactly are you selling to customers? Absolutely. So we are uh, one of the many no code software providers that have uh, sort of mushroomed up in the last five, 10 years. Uh, so Oxit is, um, I mean, the position Oxit is slightly different from some of the other players which are out there in the market. Uh, and our core value proposition is that we are trying to help businesses which uh, the mostly focusing on small and medium businesses who have limited access to uh, customized built technologies like Salesforce and SAP uh, because those are very enterprise and uh, generally very difficult to implement and very expensive. So we want to give them a platform to completely build a customized software solution without writing any code. Okay. Uh, and then which can also integrate with other third party softwares uh, and sort of become a, a overall ERP and a CRM system going forward. And when did you launch the company? What year? So we started, uh, the first line of code was sort of written as a side project, actually. So I was running a prior business to this. Uh, so uh, so my co-founder, who's also my brother, uh, we started coding in 2016. And uh, we launched uh, the website and we went live in 2017, April. Okay. How much money did you guys spend building that MVP before your first dollar revenue? Do you remember? Uh, it's about $100,000. Okay. And what did you spend that money actually, on? Actually, we didn't spend it. So that was more opportunity cost. It was not really money spent. It was just opportunity cost of us not working elsewhere. I see. Okay. So 2017, 2016 code, 2017 first dollar revenue. Now today, how much revenue are you doing per month? So, uh, so we are sub $100,000 in annual recurring revenue. Uh, we are doing about a few thousand dollars and uh, we have pivoted in the way. Uh, so when we started off, uh, we were focusing on the really small businesses. Now we've started focusing more on the mid-size businesses, like 50 to 500 people. Uh, initially, we started launched it as a do-it-yourself product, and that was a big mistake that we learned that uh, the kind of customers that we were chasing uh, were not really ready for a do-it-yourself kind of product. So, how many customers do you have today? Uh, so, overall, we have served fifty plus customers. At the moment, we have twenty-one light-paying customers. Okay, and what do they pay on average per month? So, they're paying us about two hundred and seventy-five dollars a month. Okay, got it, got it. So, we can kind of back in. You're doing about call it fifty-five hundred dollars per month in monthly recurring revenue. That's right. Now, I want to go back to this. You said you two things that was interesting. One, you got, you know, customers here fairly quick first year. And then also you said that it was a mistake who you're going after earlier. So explain to me how you got your first couple of customers and when you realized that it was a mistake to have them. Right. So when we launched Oxid, uh, the whole idea was uh, to launch it as a sort of a DIY platform. So people can come and build their own software without writing any code. So we uh, so there was, the mistake was uh, the platform was not ready in one year because I mean, it requires a lot of uh, more than the technology, it also requires a lot of customer support articles, uh, support in terms of how you are going to onboard the customer. So the entire journey of onboarding a customer. Uh, so, uh, so the other challenge was, uh, 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 so w one thing is not coding. The other thing is understanding what business requirements you need to code for. And a lot of the customers in this uh, less than 50 people category, they don't know uh, what business processes they need to, to basically manage the business operations. And uh, they, they are never able to define the business operations very, very articulately. And uh, so because if you can't define business processes articulately, there's no way you can go and build an application on a no-code software. Uh, so the challenge was that they didn't even have the sort of the consulting. So that there was a little bit of consultation which was required, which, you, which we would not get to do. Yeah, and uh, so that's where we felt uh, that was not a. Very you, good you can't risk. consult on a two hundred dollar a month plan. That's not enough revenue Absolutely. to consult on. Absolutely. How many people are on the team today? So we are uh, two founders and three people. So we have three developers who are working with us now. Okay. So okay, got it. So uh, and are they, so they're full time engineers or consultants. Uh, they're full-time engineers. Okay, so how are you covering costs here? Did you just you and your brother save up some money and you're kind of paying costs out of out of your own savings? 
Uh, so part of partly that and partly uh, my brother uh, sort of works as a part-time CTO and I work as a part-time uh, consultant with World Bank. Okay. So you guys, so basically the five grand you make each month in revenue is enough to pay for your three full-time engineers and you and your brother don't take a salary right now because you have other jobs. That's right. Okay. When are you going to cut the safety nets, man? You got to cut, you got to quit the jobs and go all in on this. Uh, so we are about to do that right now. Uh, so we are uh, we are just launching. Uh, so basically, I mean, uh, we started off as a uh, this started off as a weekends and nights project, and now we are down to one day a week uh, because we have saved up enough money to sort of scale up. And uh, so the idea is to hit a product market fit. And uh, so as soon as we are hitting about a hundred thousand, so we are actually doing a, a fundraise right now uh, to raise about a half a million to maybe a million dollars to take us to the next level. Mm. Um, so let's say you're, you raise half a million today. What valuation are you hoping to raise that on? Uh, so uh, we we don't want to dilute more than 15 to 20%. Okay, got it. So if you raise 500 grand and you're selling 10% of the company, you're basically saying you're aiming for a $4.5 million pre-money valuation, something like that. That's right. Okay, which would be, I mean, obviously when you do the math relative to your AR, that is a obviously a massive multiple. Uh, why, why... So two things there. One, why take the dilution at all? And then two, even with a great multiple, uh, you know, do, do, does it make you nervous growing into a four point five million dollar valuation? Uh, not at all. So, um, so in terms of uh, in terms of how we have sort of navigated the last couple of years uh, and the kind of customers who have stuck on with us, I mean, we see a lot of expansion revenue. Uh, we see a lot of stickiness in the product. Wait, can you can, you, can you quantify that for me? So can you tell me the story of a customer that started paying you a hundred bucks and now they're paying you, I don't know, whatever, how much more they're paying? Sure. Absolutely. So, uh, we are working with one of the, uh, one of the divisions of amazon.india, amazon.com. Uh, so it's a business called Prion business solutions. Uh, they started working with us in about a year and a half, two years ago. And it started off as a small POC for about 10 users. And now it's expanded to about 120 users. And uh, we are doing, uh, so we started with uh, less than, I think, $500, uh, sorry, uh, we started with less than $100 a month, approximately, it was just a small POC, and uh, now it's expanded to about uh, $1,200 a, a month. Okay, and how many accounts like that have, you know, 10 x over the past 12 months? Three. Okay, three folks. And what are you, so help us understand that, because it's it's rare for a company this young to have this kind of expansion revenue. So what are you upselling against? Is it just number of seats? Uh, so it's number. It's just not just number of seats. So Oxit can be used by multiple departments within a large enterprise or a, a growing business. Uh, so the idea is to build multiple workflows. So we started with one workflow, and now we have expanded to five workflows in this particular case. It, 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 give me a real example of what a workflow is. What does that mean? So workflow is, uh, for example, I mean this particular uh, case is like uh, this is new merchant onboarding. So whenever a new merchant is getting onboarded on Amazon platform, so there are about three hundred. Mer- 300,000 merchants who get onboarded and uh, they have to be served and maintained. So they ha- they come up with new business requirements. So like new business requirements for, let's say, doing cataloging services, new business requirement for meeting compliances. So there is a team of uh, merchant support. Uh, uh, there's a team of merchant support agents uh, who are basically supporting uh, these merchants o- over different campaigns. And uh, these campaigns have very different workflows. Are you, so, uh, are you like Zapier where they can connect anything or you have like four or five predefined workflows you've built that they can plug and play with? So we are not like Zapier. We are like more like Airtable or Kissflow or we're more like QuickBase. So that means you basically have these, again, seven things, lead management, invoicing, order management, customer support tickets, expense tracking, and project-wise profit and loss as kind of systems that people use you for. Uh, so those are just samples of workflows that people use us for, but uh, so they can also use it uh, use us for pretty much everything, anything else that they can imagine. So it's like a uh, it's essentially a virtualized database, and you can come and build your own virtualized database, and you can come and build your own approval uh, workflow systems on Oxid. Okay, makes sense. Uh, so, you can use it, so you can use it for expense management. You can use it for CRM. So at the moment, sixty percent of our customers use uh, Oxid for some sort of uh, uh, CRM system. Okay, how, what percent of customers use more than one product or more than one workflow? Uh, pretty much everybody, 100%. Okay, so everyone is using, you know, three or four of these things. Absolutely. Okay, when you quantify this across your entire customer base, you just told us the story of an Amazon uh, affiliate in uh, in your area that upgraded from 100 to $1,200 per month. Uh, when you add up the whole company, what is gross revenue churn annually and then add back expansion revenue? 
Uh, so those numbers are very difficult to give us. Uh, but um, I mean, just because I mean, we sort of pivoted. So initially, we were focusing a lot on uh, the smaller businesses where the churn was pretty much 100%, and we sort of decided to let them go. Uh, so in 2019, we did that in January 2019, and at that time, our um, uh, total revenue was less than thousand dollars. Now it's about like fifty five hundred dollars a month. Okay, that doesn't uh, answer the so, question though. So churn only yeah, so looks. I, mean, I don't know the numbers. So <clears throat> another, it's too early for me to give you those numbers right now. So well, you, ju- you just pretty sense. specifically gave me an expansion story though, so I don't believe that you don't necessarily know those numbers. You just told me about an expansion revenue story going from one hundred to twelve hundred, which would be a thousand percent expansion on that one co on that one customer. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, if you want to, I mean, calculate the churn percentage. So we have served about fifty seven, fifty eight customers in in the last two and a half years. No, but revenue and churn. Uh, our, uh, See, because in your perspective, what you're basically telling me is, Nathan, we intentionally churned off lower value logos, but the revenue associated with those logos was much less than even this expansion revenue from this one Amazon affiliate you serve. So I'm, I'm asking about revenue. That's why I'm, that's why I asked the question. Actually, I'm asking about revenue churn. It's about it's about thousand fifteen hundred dollars, I think. Got it. Okay, what does that mean? So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in, in terms of MRR, not in ARR, uh, about thousand fifteen hundred dollars in revenue churn. Um, uh, that, that I mean, that is what we have lost in the last two years. You got it. The to- you don't you lose it every month. That's in total what you've lost. That's right. Yeah. So okay. So thousand churn, but you just again told me one story of a customer that you know expanded by a thousand over that same period. So net revenue retention, call it somewhere north of a hundred percent at this point, because you have caught forty or fifty percent revenue churn, but you have more than fifty percent expansion. Absolutely. Interesting. When, when do you start really like tracking that hardcore? Do you use any tools to do that? So we've just started doing that uh, last month. So we started. Um, uh, so this uh, we started doing it on profit well. Uh, about a month, month and a half ago. Very good. All right, talk to me about CAC. So, what's it costing you to get a new two hundred fifty dollars a month customer? Uh, so it's anywhere about thousand uh, dollars to about twelve fifty dollars, including. Uh, so we don't do any paid marketing right now. Uh, so primarily, the cost of customer acquisition is through lead gen. Uh, so we have an account based marketing system right now, and um, so we are spending about six hundred dollars a month for that, uh, which is generating about eight to ten leads. Uh, and out of this eight to ten leads, we are able to convert one or, or sometimes two, and uh, and then there is a the cost of customer support. Uh, so normally we charge uh, one small one-time up, uh, onboarding fee, so that takes care of part of the onboarding fee. But uh, primarily, it's the uh, the lead generation cost that is costing us. Got it. And who's so doing most of the sales? You. I'm doing. I'm the only salesperson. Yeah, very cool. All right. So payback period. You spend twelve out twelve fifty to one thousand two hundred fifty. Get it a customer that pays two hundred fifty dollars a month. Payback period of about five uh, months or something like that. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Very cool. Now you mentioned. Uh, well, actually, you didn't mention this. You, you are bootstrap today, right? We are bootstrap. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So bootstrap today. And then, how much capital are you burning every month that you and your brother have to make up for from your savings? Uh, so we don't uh, we don't burn anything right now. So all our salaries. So uh, that's the benefit of being in India. Uh, so all the all the salaries uh, that we're paying right now are taken care of by uh, the revenue that we are making. So you're break uh, so even. The, so we're break even from that perspective, but we don't take any money from. So our opportunity cost is not paid for. Yep. Yep. Very good. All right. Let's wrap up here and end with the famous five. Number one favorite business book. Uh, so it's not really a business book, but uh, I love reading Paul Graham's essays, uh, and I always fall back upon those. Uh, so Paul Graham from YC. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, so I like uh, Satya Nadella, and uh, there's a CEO in India uh, called Sunil Bharti Mittal, who's head of one of India's largest telcos. So I like these two people. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building orgs at? Um, so it has to be Hotjar. Uh, so I love to sort of sneak upon my trial users and see how they're using the product because uh, that gives me a lot of perspective in terms of uh, what product features to be developed and how they're interacting with the product in the early stages. Okay, so because hot- one of the things which I forgot to mention is like the first three months is the most crucial. Uh, if a customer stays with us for three months, then we have seen that there is a very little chance of them to churn after three months. Yep, yep. Hotjar, very good tool for this sort of thing. What activation metric are you seeing if you're spying kind of on them to see if they hit Neaton? 
uh, inviting more users into the system and uh, assigning tasks uh, to those new users. Yep. Guys, if you want to use Hotjar to do the same thing, it basically generates little videos for every customer that uses your website. It'll generate a video that's showing you where they clicked, how they scrolled to help you better improve your onboarding. If you want to try Hotjar, go to nathanlacka.com forward slash Hotjar. All right, number four, Nathan, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? So I get about six to seven hours of sleep. Pretty good. And what's your situation? Married, single, kiddos? So I've been married for the last 11 years. Uh, I'm 39. And uh, I have two two little girls. Two oh. little beautiful girls. So, oh, very well. You have three startups. All right. Uh, take us home here. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Um, I wish I knew software is going to eat the world and I would not have gone and done civil engineering. I would have focused on becoming a software engineer when I was 20. Guys, there you have it. Orgs at helping companies with their workflows. They have one customer that expanded from hundred bucks a month up to $1,200 per month over the past 12 months alone. They've just passed five, uh, $5,500 a month in revenue. Bootstrapped the company so far today, hoping to raise about 500 to a million dollars right now, uh, selling about 10% of the company. We'll see if they can make it happen. Team of five, two founders, their brothers and three full-time engineers. Neaton, we're rooting for you. Thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. These CEOs rarely give these kinds of interviews. I hit them hard, I get the data, and I wanna do it more. So if you wanna get more of this stuff, make sure you subscribe up here, and then additionally, go check out one of my other CEO interviews right now.